Somebody has a birthday. Praise God. Hallelujah. Sister Melissa, hallelujah, let's give God praise, amen. amen. Now my wife taught me never to ask, never ask a daughter of God how old, right? But um, if you don't care, sis, come up, come up, we're going to celebrate you and uh, we're going to sing happy birthday to you. I done dropped the ball the past couple weeks. We've had a lot of birthdays actually. But um, listen guys, don't let the past birthday people... Um, you know, run their mouth, they, they, they got a gift from us, okay, so, you know, that, that's on the down low, amen, oh, that looks so good, <laughs> beloved family, let's stand up, we're going to sing happy birthday to sister Melissa, <laughs> is there anybody's birthday today, yeah, la okay, last week, praise God, last week, sorry about that again, um, I know you really want to wear this sombrero, we'll, we'll probably do it Sunday for you, sis. <laughs> hey, uh, um, since, since we're having so much fun after the birthday, let's open up in prayer too. Does that sound good? Amen. Amen. Let's all sing happy birthday. Twenty-three, praise God. Twenty-three. So it's not it's not just me. Hallelujah. Twenty-three. Good word. Amen. Our most gracious heavenly Father, as uh, as we just thank you, Father, for you are good and perfect. And Father God, thank you that you love us despite anything. It's all because of you, Lord Jesus Christ. There's no question about how much you love us, Father. And Lord Jesus, in everything that we do, we just want to give you all glory, honor, and praise. And Father, the way we do it is the way we live our life, being obedient unto you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, this is your church. And in the name of Lord Jesus Christ, we bind up every foul thing that does not belong. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, that as we stand in agreement, that there is nothing that can come against your blood, Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father God, that you have... You bless our beloved families right now that are needing healing, that, 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 that have went through a loss, Father God, what this world calls a loss. Father, we lift up those right now that their, their relationships are struggling. And Father God, above all, Father, we lift up all of your churches, that Father God, that we would be unified as one in you, Father, and that we would just bring in a mighty harvest for your kingdom. Father, bless us, protect us, speak to us, and teach us, Holy Spirit. It's in Jesus Christ's holy name and all God's beloved said, amen. God bless you guys. Hallelujah. Give somebody a high five. Hallelujah. What's going on? Oh, all the babies go upstairs. Hallelujah. What's up, buddy? Come on, let's go. Come on. Yeah, that's what's up. Thank you, beloved. Well, Holy Spirit said to, so I'm going to, even though um, we started late, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to do this all the time, but we are obviously excited in the overflow and um, just blessed as far as what, what Holy Spirit is doing. But what I'm going to read is I'm going to read something out of page 23 in um, our new book, I Am My Beloved. And this is what it says about fasting. You said that if I wanted to be delivered, that I should fast and pray. Who am I to ever question you, anything you should ever say? Your glory surpasses my every understanding. Your love is beyond anything and everything. To bless you, my Father God, is in my every being. I will show you through faith and rebuke my seeing. Bless me with the strength, the power to accomplish this fast you set before me. For you are my peace, Holy Spirit, there is none before thee. You know my heart's desires, before anything it is you who I seek. Bless me with the strength, 
for the flesh is very weak. But you, Holy Spirit, is willing to hold me every step of the way. For I only trust in you. Your word is who I will say. When I feel weak, you, my Lord, is strong. You are my music, my life is your divine song. I remember that you fasted those 40 days and nights so that I can draw closer and always remember to fight the good fight. Amen. And that is, oh, yeah. I'll stop. The, the, the title of this worship service tonight is If or When, and it has to do with fasting. And these are, these are the books we're going to be into. We're going to be in Matthew. We're going to get, we're gonna get into as far as what Father God's uh, requirements are as far as when we fast. And then in Matthew 7 there, it, it, Matthew 17 in the red, we're going to go into, say with me, into. We're going to go into the gospel coming alive because it's the story when Lord Jesus Christ had to intercede in, in taking care of business. And then we're going to go into the New Covenant Church, how the Apostle Paul ministered to the Church of Corinth, because that was a church that had a lot of problems. And so we're going to get into that, and then we're going to summarize everything with a top secret, say it with me, top secret, <laughs> top secret element of fasting that I'm going to be bold enough to say it, Pastor, no one knows. And you're going to get it tonight, amen. Say it with me, our God is alive. Say this gooder, he has something to say. Let's say that again because that was kind of weak. He has something to say. And let's make it gooder in me. Amen. So, so let's get into this, praise God. When we talk about if or when, I'm not coming at you as if I'm being um, rude or, or, or trying to act like I know more. I don't know nothing. But when I was typing this in, Holy Spirit says, I want you to stress if or when. And I said, well, what does that mean? Have you ever done that when you ask the Lord, what are you talking about? I hear you loud and clear, but what is it exactly, Pastor? That, and, it, and then Father says this, when I say if, that means there's a choice. Right? If you're cold, if you're cold, get a, get a blanket. Right, go get a blankie, right? And if you don't, that's up to you, right? But then Holy Spirit said, if I say when, this means that I have an expectation. Amen? Amen. Are we all on the same page? When God says when, this means I have an expectation for you to do this, Brother Chris, because I'm going to show you why. Amen? So there's not a question, right, if or when. We have to start this way because li look at how the scripture says it. When, <laughs> when you fast. Now I'm going to tell you this is one of the sorest subjects and I'm surprised. Even with people who claim that they worship God, guess what? Well, I can't do that. It's not an option. Does it say if? Does God say if you? Or does God say when you fast? He's saying when. This means I expect you at some point in your life that you are going to do this. Amen? Are we all on the same page? And we have to, I have to. Amen? I'm not, praise God. Look, Brother Joey, two hands. Hallelujah. Amen. So we're all on the same page. Praise God. Do not look somber, don't look pitiful, as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces and show others they are fasting. There's religions like this today. There's religions like this today. They'll, they'll put ash all over themselves, dress up, and they're just trying to show in their worship. I'm not judging them, but I'm saying this is what the Bible says, don't do that. Amen. Well, pastor, why are you so passionate about this? Listen, 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 Linda. Truly I tell you, they have received their full reward. So if your objective in fasting is to, well, I'm going to fast, but, hey, how you doing, Joey? Oh, I've been fasting today. I got my reward. I just completely did myself in. Amen? Oh, well, yeah, just 
Oh, right? Say it with me. Rebuke that. Listen. But when you fast, this is what God says. Father says to do this. Put oil on your head and wash your face so that you will be not obvious to others that you are fasting. But only the Father who is unseen, your Father. Say it with me, Daddy. He sees what is done in secret and he will reward you. Amen. Amen. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. So there's a gut and brain connection that Holy Spirit wants to address quickly before we go into the story of how Lord Jesus Christ performed these miracles and how he taught us. But this gut and brain connection, I tried my best. Holy Spirit told me what to do. And I tried my best being obedient to what the Lord wanted so that we can see what's happening. So bear with me because as, as we go through this, I pray in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit is the teacher. Amen. That, that, that he'll bless us. That Holy Spirit will bless us not only with the boldness to be obedient, Brother David, and to carry out this fast. You see, right now, Holy Spirit is telling me, there's some of you that say that you can't do it. But if you were at a doctor and a doctor said, I, you can't eat anything because we need to run a test. Okay. Where are you? Can I get an amen? amen. Oh, you're mad at me now. Okay. I see how it is. You're mad at me now. All right. All right, you, you want me to just tag pastor in to finish up this message? Because I ain't going to lie to you. Oh, preacher, I can't, I can't fast because, you know, my blood sugar and, you know, I get a headache. But once the doctor says, come on now, hallelujah. Once the doctor says, I want you to fast, okay. What is, what is that? Do you not know that God Almighty is aware that you just put the doctor above him? <laughs> Come on, my beloved. Rebuke that. Amen. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about the gut and, and, and the gut and brain connection. Here you have your three-part being that the Bible says that we're made in God's image, right? We are the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have an eternal soul that belongs to Father God. Amen. The victory is ours. It's already won. Amen. And Holy Spirit lives on the inside. That's the red, blue, and green. This is what God wants to just plant this seed. And we're not going to get too technical or everything. But God just wants to plant this seed to just show you what's happening inside when you start to fast. And this is what takes place, okay. When you start fasting, here comes, <laughs> that's your stomach right there. <laughs> that's your stomach. Now I'm going to tell you right now. If your stomach is like my stomach, the moment you say you're going to start fast, fasting, that little buddy just throws a hissy fit. Right? Well, well, man, what are we going to do? I mean, we got all this food in the refrigerator. There's a birthday coming up, you know, and all this stuff, right? All these things. But listen to my heart behind this. The stomach produces this hormone. It's called ghrelin. It, it, it almost sounds like gremlin. And the funny thing about gremlins, you can't feed them after midnight. Right? Well, guess what? This, gr <laughs> this ghrelin, this ghrelin, this hormone, this is what's produced in the stomach when you start thinking about food. I was going to do it. Holy Spirit said no. So I said okay. But I was going to put pictures of all this different food. <laughs> and Holy Spirit said no. And I said okay, I'm sorry, Father. Right? But the only reason why my mind went that way is because this hormone that's produced in your stomach, what it does is it travels up to the brain, and then what the hope is, is that the brain is going to accept it, and then now that hormone is running havoc in the brain. And this is what causes you to get crunchy or short-tempered. That's why there's a lot of cray-crays in line at the, at, at the McDonald's, and right? Give me my Happy Meal. You know what I mean? I need to eat yesterday, right? I mean, because they're hungry, they're starving, there's all this food behind the counter, and it's like, hurry up, right? Well, this is the thing that this hormone wants to do. It wants to take control as far as your senses. That's powerful. That the stomach can trigger something like that, and then when it comes up to the brain, if you allow it, say it with me, that's the key word. Because if you allow it, that's what's going to happen, and then guess what? There ain't going to be no fast. You're going you're gonna to succumb into eating. All right? The next picture is this. Your, 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 your stomach's throwing a hissy fit. It's trying, to, it's trying to tell the brain 
look, I'm starving, I need food, but this is what's so beautiful, say it with me, about me. You have Jesus, amen? You have Holy Spirit in you, amen? Amen? You have God living in you, amen? See, the difference between you and a devil is this. God Almighty gives you the power in Jesus' name to control thoughts. Can I get a hallelujah? And how do you control these thoughts? The moment you feel the hunger pain, you already know that the gremlin is trying to come up, right? You already know that the gremlin is trying to speak to you, amen? But in Jesus' name, what you do is you think of God's goodness, and this is what happened. It stops right there. So when it stops right there, this is what happens. Nothing is, nothing is going down to the stomach, but the stomach thinks that I'm all right. You have to change your thought. It's similar to repentance. Ooh, I'm so excited. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's similar to repentance where I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But see, if you're truly sorry, everything changes about you. You ever have somebody that say they're sorry, but then the next week they're doing the same thing over? There's no repentance. Can I get an amen? But you know somebody who's repented because the way they live, they talk. The Man, that, that brother really repented. He's in the overflow with God. Amen. And the same way here is when you tell your stomach, no, we, we're full. Listen, Lord Jesus Christ is in charge of this fast. I thank God that he's, he's already been at this moment right now. We're not thinking about this any longer. Family, I'm concerned about every, not only every one of you, but our entire church family. Because there's people that believe that this is not important. You're going to have to answer to God. Because he said, when you fast. So it's time to get rid of excuses, amen. And so this is what I love. When you know that you're keeping those thoughts captive, check this out. This is what Holy Spirit does to your stomach. Isn't that cute? Ain't that cute? And listen, the communication between the brain and the stomach, there is no more. Now, why does Father God want us to fast this way? Father God is rebuking anything that's trying to pull you emotionally and drag your spirit in the mud. Did you notice that when you're hungry, it don't take nothing to get something to eat? Right? If you don't have nothing, you can call somebody and here comes that little vehicle with the nice Papa John's on the hood. Right? Drop off a nice, right? Even some of us right now as we're talking about that, guess what? That gremlin is starting to act up, huh? Ain't it? Holy Spirit's showing me right now. It's like, oh, your, your mouth starts to water. You start thinking about your favorite pizza, right? But these are those moments where it's like, Father, teach me. Holy Spirit will do it right now inside of you. Father, teach me. Right now it's happening to me. Teach me. And he'll show you. Maybe he'll show you Jesus on the cross. Maybe he'll show you our Lord in the wilderness, fasting for 40 days in the desert with no water and no food. Right? But I pray that you, I pray, did this bless you guys? Amen. Y'all are never going to look at gremlins the same, huh? Amen. It's not a gremlin now, but I, I, I just say that. So the power of fasting is this. As we go into the story, when they had come to the multitude, a man came to him, kneeling down to him, saying, Lord, have mercy on my son. He's an epileptic and suffers severely. He often falls into the fire and often into the water. Now, before we get all crazy and weird with this story, you got to remember back then there was no heaters. <laughs> right? I mean, fires was everywhere. Amen. There was no electricity. <laughs> Can I get an amen? All right. So let's just not get weird with, with God. Amen. It's just that when, the, when, when this demon would affect him, he, you know, and, and if you've ever seen somebody that has a seizure, they'll, they'll grab onto whatever. If they go into convulsions, it's, it's really scary, right? So he's explaining all this. So I brought him to your disciples, he says, and, he, and here's the kicker, but they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Say it with me, with you. Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon and it came out of him and the child was cured from that very hour. Amen. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Say it with me, there's power in the name of Jesus. 
Hallelujah. But we got to get to the lesson the Holy Spirit is trying to teach us. Then his disciples came to Jesus privately and said, now why did they come privately? I'll tell you right now, they were ashamed. That is the number one thing that you should gauge whenever it comes to your relationship with God. If you are ashamed or if you're self-conscious or if you're insecure, there's already something wrong. And they came to him privately, and this is what they said. They said, why could we not cast it out? Which is a valid question. Amen, beloved? Why couldn't we do it? You said we could. Why couldn't we do it? And here's what Lord Jesus said. Because of your unbelief, for assuredly, I say to you that if you had faith as a mustard seed, you say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it would move, and nothing will be impossible for you. However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and, say it with me, fasting. Amen. We have to plug into this power. As a, as a church body, listen, we have many, many brothers and sisters, glory be to God. All of your leadership, I mean, they, they're faithful in fasting. And I'm not boasting on them, it's a requirement. And I'm not doing my job as a pastor if I don't stress this to you right now. And I'm sorry that I, I failed and I dropped the ball that I haven't emphasized this as I should. Because imagine this. What if the very thing that you're believing for, all Father's asking and waiting on is for you to fast? Let's get gooder and gooder than that. What about, what about God puts on your heart to fast Because in a couple days, he has a divine assignment or an appointment that you come across with either a loved one or maybe some stranger in Walmart or Kroger that he's calling on you to lay hands on that person and you would free them from a terminal illness or a demon that's just just tormenting them. God has will and he he will always use his people to do a mighty work. But here in my heart, family, he's a God of order. Which means when Father says that the reason why this demon won't come out is because you not only have to pray, but you have to fast as well. Amen? So by a show of hands, how many of you, and you don't have to lift your hands right now, but this is the question Holy Spirit has. My beloved child, as you hear me, tell you the importance of starving yourself for my glory so that I can get so intimate with you and in you that my presence is so overwhelming that not only will I bless your needs, but I'll bless the needs of others. How many of you in God's house right now, holy saints, how many of you can already think of things that Father God can bless you in a fast? Show of hands. Every hand goes up. Well, almost every hand, our brother back there did. Oh, you put your hand up because I was going to take your blessing, brother. I love you, brother Danny. Now, isn't that interesting? We all raised our hands, right? But you notice the moment the word fast comes, well, I don't know if I really have the power or strength to do that. Immediately, we start speaking death. I want to tell you right now. It's a shame and shame on you as a child of God if Holy Spirit tells you to fast and immediately you resort to speaking the words of Satan. Well, I just don't know if I can fast because I've never done that before. Well, duh. It's time to do it now. Can you get an amen? amen? Listen, you can go without a breakfast. Believe me. You can go without a breakfast, right? You can go without a lunch. Well, pastor, what are you talking about? Can I just do a lunch? Can I just? Holy Spirit, I'm not God. Holy Spirit will tell you. But beloved family, we have to start somewhere. I just ministered to somebody not too long ago, and he's like, oh, man, I really want to do a three-day fast. So I stopped him, and I said, how long have you fasted? Well, I've never done it. Why don't you start with just a meal? 
Can I get an amen? Help me. Laugh a little. Come on now, right? Why are you talking about three days? Just start with one meal. Right? Stop playing games with God. Talk about, oh, I really wish I could do three days. Why don't you just skip breakfast, boo-boo? Huh? Right? Let's skip breakfast for now. Well, how many days do I do it? Ask God. And God will bless you. You know why? If you, mm, Help me, Lord. How fasting can bless your marriage. It is good for a man to not touch a woman. Hear my heart now, family. Hear my heart. This ain't no homosexual message. That's from the pit of hell. Can again, amen. amen. All right. What God is saying here is don't sin. Don't sin. Don't, don't, don't be perverted. You know, don't let sexual immorality take over. Don't let lust take over. No, so hear me. You can't just go with the first verse and then make a church and a cult out of it because that's what's happening right now in this perverse world. Amen? It's, it's perverted. It's not God. Can I get an amen? amen? I don't want souls going to hell, and I can't be a part of that. Amen? So listen, I have, I have friends and family. Yes, I call them friends and family that are openly gay, and they know that I love them and I don't judge them. But when they ask me, when they ask me my opinion, I tell them, are you ready to hear the truth? Because I guarantee you when I tell you the truth, you're not going to want anything to do with me no more. Because you're going to judge me even though I don't judge you. There is wrong and there is right. Can I get an amen? There is good and there is evil. Can I get a hallelujah? There is heaven and there is hell. Can I get an amen? All right, let's be clear on this. Hallelujah. Wake up, church. Can I get an Amen. Oh, hallelujah. So check this out. You can't just read number one and go, oh, well, there you go. Right? No, listen to what God is saying. Nevertheless, because of sexual immorality. See, Father God's calling out what the devil tries to do to us with the evil desires of this flesh. That the evil desires is going to try to tempt us and try to trap us. To be one with a prostitute, to be one with someone that's not yoked in God, to be one with the devil. Why? Because the devil wants you to be trapped in him so he could put soul ties inside. Oh, come on now. Say it with me, no more. Father God, listen, if you're single, Father God, I believe and declare right now, Father God has the perfect woman for you right now, chasing you down. And it's even gooder now because you stopped with all the distractions and you're being still. So praise God, the gooder daughter is going to come because you, you kept still. Maybe you're a woman you're looking for that husband. Same thing. Give your heart to God. It has to be just God first. Amen. Listen, family. I've seen, I've seen too many people. Too many people getting tricked up. With people claiming to be a Christian, and they just want to hook up with somebody. And then th th they just go to a life of pure destruction. Listen, the only man that deserves our heart, his name is Jesus. Can I get an amen? He's number one. He's number one. Seriously, this is how I minister to gay people. Seriously, this is how I minister to gay people. There's no secret to how I minister to gay people. If you're a boy and you like boys, I will tell you straight up, the only reason why you like boys is because you need to fall in love with Jesus. Can you give God praise for that one? Boys, boys only deserve to be worshiping Lord Jesus Christ because he's the only man. He's the only real man. Amen. You don't need to be with another man. If you're a girl doing the same thing, being with other girls, I'm going to say, you know why you're doing that? You know why you don't find men attractive? You need to get with Jesus. He's the only one, right? Glory be to God. When you, when, you, when you give your life over to Jesus, Holy Spirit will live inside of you. And I'll tell you right now, it isn't, it isn't about being a Christian and, oh, I got a golden ticket. And now I can live my life any way I want to live with no holiness in me, cuss like a sailor. Cheat on my wife, do every kind of drug you can think. Is that God? Can I ask you a question? You answer yes or no. Is God perverted? Is God confused? Does God lie? Does God cheat? Does he steal, kill, or destroy? 
So let me ask you something. How in the world can you start a religion or claim to be part of a denomination that does those things and say that it's okay with God? Amen. Can't do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we all clear? God made man and God made woman. Amen. And God made man and woman to be together. There ain't no if, ands, or buts about it. Can I get an amen? Listen, I don't care if people bash me. Listen, I'm, I'm just telling you the way it is. Amen? If, if, if this was a stove and there's boiling water, boiling water, steam coming out of it, right? And I tell you, don't touch it. That's hot. Right? That's hot. You can argue with me the temperature. <laughs> you, can, you can argue with me, you know, what materials you can put in it. The bottom line is it's hot. Right? Are we all in agreement? It's boiling. Steam's coming out. Let me ask you something. If you touch it, what's going to happen? Amen? Guess what? Hell is the same way. Amen? I pray somebody on Facebook gets this because I know all you all in here. Let the husband render to his wife the affection due her, and likewise the husband does the same. The wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. Amen? Amen. <laughs> it's okay to laugh. Give God praise. Amen? You, you said amen, honey. Amen. It's on video. You said amen. <laughs> Pastor, you heard it, right? She said amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hey, let, let me do that again. It's so good or I want to repeat it again. Hallelujah. The wife does not have authority over her own body, but the husband does. Amen. All the men said amen. <laughs> Praise God, brother, brother Joyce. Hallelujah. Amen. And likewise, the husband does not have authority over his own body, but the wife does. Amen. Amen. So we're getting deep now, right? Because Father God is breaking down the barriers and saying, man and, man and woman shall become one. And this is symbolic of our salvation in Lord Jesus Christ and the anointing of Holy Spirit in us to help us with what we're going to come to, which is amazing and how God teaches this. Amen. Get ready for this. This is what's so, so awesome. Do not deprive one another except with consent for a time. Say this word with me, abstain. All right. So this is what we need to clear up real quickly. Because there's a lot of confusion in Christianity right now that they say abstaining is the same as fasting. It is not. That is a lie from the pit of hell. Abstaining is one way of stopping to do something in obedience to God because God said stop social media for a while. Okay, Father, I will stop. How long do you want me to stop? And Father God says abstain from it. Get away from it. Are you guys listening? Are we still good? That is not fasting. Oh, half the room right now got crunchy. Half the room got crunchy, Sister Amanda. How dare you, Pastor, tell me that that. It's not. Abstaining has nothing to do with that. Have you ever stopped social media and go, man. That Facebook really tastes good right now. No, it's different. Do we all agree? Yeah. All right, good. Praise God. Because listen, God has nothing to do with confusion. Right, Brother Chris? So we got to put order in all this. But here, Father God is telling married couples, if you, if you choose to abstain from sex, from get, coming together, check this out. That you may give yourself time for fasting and prayer. Now we're getting real deep in marriages now. Can I get a hallelujah? hallelujah? If your marriage is going through something right now, this is the time to start. This is where we need to start. Trish, keep your hands off me. No, hey, I don't mean that. I'm just telling you a story, okay? So let's just laugh right now, okay? Honey, don't, don't, you, don't you dare repeat. Lord, help me. All right. <laughs> I, a pastor just said it's on video. <laughs> All right, but what I'm saying is this, is that because by the grace of God, this is how Holy Spirit's marriage is with us. And I know many of us are the same way. Father puts it on our hearts to fast, and we, we, we talk. And if there's any confusion in the days, the amount of days, or what we're fasting, 
we both go to our secret room and pray. Amen. Like pastor, you go walk. Hallelujah. Go walk. Father, I need clarity. I need your specific direction. On the way back, listen. Okay, Lord. And then guess what? When we come back, okay, we know what to do. Automatically, we abstain. Automatically. And I'm not, I'm not saying, oh, well, look at Joey and Tristan. I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is that it's intimacy with God. Amen. And I promise you in Jesus' name, when you do this, as a husband and wife, oh, my goodness, just get ready. Amen. Gooder and gooder. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise. It's, it's true. Hallelujah. Come on, brother. Gooder and gooder. Hallelujah. And then check this out. I love how God's so, so specific and order in his word. And come together. And come together again. So that Satan does not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. So let me please, let me please, without being derogatory or, you know, you know, weird about this, but let's just bless Holy Spirit in how he wants to teach us. The, way, the reason why there's so many Christian marriages that are failing and falling right now, number one, they are not worshiping together. Majority, and it's over 80%, but you know what they say about statistics? 80% is made up, which means it's all, it's all. But here in my heart, majority of marriages, the wife is the one worshiping and being the head of the house. Ain't that a crying shame, Pastor? It is. Praise God. That does not stand here at Open Arms Community Church. Let's give God praise. Amen. It does not stand here in Holy Spirit Church. Amen. We are men of God. We are sons of God. And we know. We know to treat his daughters. Amen. With the love and, 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 and support and, and bless them. But here in my heart, when, when, when Father God tells a married couple to address a certain problem, the problem already goes back maybe months or maybe years where they're already withholding from one another because of hurt or transgression. Hear my heart because we just opened up that when you're married, God is saying, you're, you're, David, you're not in charge of you. God Almighty says, she has the say. And then you can't boast, Sister Virginia, because you're not in charge of your body. He has a say. You see how that just breaks down like what in the world? Because we live now in a world where I have this right. I have this right. No, this is my right. No, I'm going to be equal like the man. No, you know what? I'm going to be stronger than the man. Are you kidding me? God has an order for the house. Can I get a hallelujah? Listen. Listen. You guys know me for years and there's, I don't degrade women. Are you kidding me? Y'all are beloved daughters of God. I fear you because you are masterpieces and Holy Spirit's anointing floods you. Come on now. I fear you guys, seriously. And I love you guys because you guys are my beloved sisters. And I know the power that you all have. That's the treasure as far as being a man of God. But why will we take away God's order from what he has ordained and, 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 and submit ourselves to the nature of this world where the, wife wants, where the wife wants to be the head of the house and then the husband's like, well, okay. It, yeah, that's fine. There ain't no backbone no more. But then as Christians, we have the audacity to complain to God when the marriage is falling apart, when children aren't acting right. Why? It's not in order. Can I get an amen? So it's time to start putting it in order. Can I get a hallelujah? So we could start, we could start by, okay, Father, I hear you. Because my body's not my own. You're my master, Lord Jesus Christ. I'm your slave. And Holy Spirit, I will do everything you tell me to do. I will give whatever you tell me to give. I, whatever. And so Father will tell you, well, your wife. That's your wife and you're one with her. And so you need to make sure that everything that you're doing to your body, even offering your body, is pleasing to her. Oh, you're not hearing me, family. I'm really bummed out you're not, you're not hearing me. You're not hearing me. It's not a matter of me eating two large pizzas in front of the TV, drinking a milkshake, and thinking it's okay. 
It's about Holy Spirit conviction saying you need to take care of your temple. And if you think you're all right, ask your wife. Wah, wah, wah. Fasting top secret. You ready for a top secret? One person. Are you, are you all okay? Should we just end church now and just pray? You guys go home? Seriously, because, I mean, the, I don't know. The way you're acting is kind of weird. I mean, seriously, like, I mean, are you good? Are you good for real? Okay, take, take it in. That's good. Pastor spoke it. You're taking it in? Listen, Father God wants the best for us. And we know the time is coming soon. That we're going to be looking right at the Lord. And I can't have any part of not telling you something that I should have done did. And I tell you right now, all these things, you notice, everything that Holy Spirit right now is saying. These are sore subjects. I mean, these are subjects that would cause churches to split, some churches to shut down. You know, some pastors to get kicked out. Right, pastor? When you start addressing the order of God and his character and what's right and wrong. But here in my heart, family, when it comes down to fasting, it's not, it's not something you can negotiate. You have to change and repent your mind. It's time to start. And listen, even if you start, once again, I'll be a broken record. Just that meal, to you it may seem insignificant. But to God, it's everything. Because look, hallelujah, it's everything. Because you're talking about God of the universe with all his power and might, with all his angels ready to bless you, and they're all like this. They're just waiting. And they're just waiting for you to make the move because you make that move, son. And God says, I'm going to pour down. I'm going to rain down on you. Hallelujah. Are you ready for God to rain down? Hallelujah. Are you ready for God to rain down his blessing? Amen. So we're going to do it. Hallelujah. We're going to do it. Amen. And I want to be, I want I want us to be a holy church where there's always somebody fasting. We said not too long ago, we're all going to have a heart of repentance. Amen. Amen. Then we're not going to walk around in the community or with our family that, you know, you need to say sorry to me. You're the one that, no, rebuke that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It happened last night. We just had to say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If that person forgives you, that's between them and God. But guess what? You bless God with that sorry. Amen? You tell Father God, I'm sorry. Amen? Amen. This is the top secret. Are you ready for the top secret, family? Yeah. This is something that you've never heard in a fasting message or in a fasting book. May I be so bold to say that? I'm just going to say it. Amen? So check this out, this picture right here. That's at our friendly Walmart, right? And what do you call this section of the grocery store? This is called produce. Praise God. So proud of y'all. Hallelujah. It's so awesome because the whole time I'm giving you a hard time not being so enthusiastic. But the moment you see Walmart, produce. <laughs> we just need to have a bunch of Walmart pictures up on the screen. Hallelujah. All right, so that's produce. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but we've been going through this message, if or when you fast. And fasting has to do with eating, right? Are we all in agreement? But this is what I love how Holy Spirit teaches, and it's for such a time as this. So we're going to close right here, and we're going to go, we're going to transition into the book of Proverbs. Now just a friendly reminder, the book of Proverbs is a book of wisdom. Now I know it's the entire book of the Bible, Holy Bible is wisdom. But here in my heart, it's the book of Kings. I mean, there's such wisdom in Proverbs, I beg you, make it a challenge to read Proverbs every day. Every day. If you want to get into the new covenant and read some type of book of wisdom, read James. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, the book of James, amen. But check this out and we're going to go, we're going to close on this. Say it with me, produce. In Proverbs 18 verses 20, 21 says this. A man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit, from the produce. He shall be filled. He will eat its fruit. Can I get an amen? amen? What you see on this screen right here 
does it not look like it's what we eat? And say it with me, fast. Father God wants to teach us a top secret missing component of why when we fast we don't see results. Are you ready? Do I need to repeat that? Are you ready? I know many of you are fixed on the screen, but I don't want that to be a distraction. There's many of us that we fast, but we're not seeing results, Pastor. There's many of us that we fast and, oh, nothing happened. Are you ready to see why? A man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth, from the produce of his lips. He shall be filled. Death and life are in the power of the... And those who love it will eat its fruit. Are you guys ready? Stand up with me, praise God. Are you guys ready for this? Are you guys ready for this revelation from the Lord? Only Holy Spirit can do this. When we're fasting... Not only are we battling as far as keeping this in check and submitting our thoughts to the Lord and saying, Father, I am going to do this fast because you said so. And you will. You will sustain me. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the manna from heaven. You are my food. And you promised that through you I will never thirst. Holy Spirit, you are my drink. Can I get an amen? Hear me, hear me family. We're all standing in attention for the Lord. Amen. Brother Joy, if you don't mind, can you get the lights? The reason why many of us don't get that breakthrough, that answer, when we pray and fast, is because we don't fast the garbage that we speak out. We're still eating filth. We're still eating death. Well, Brother Joey, I'm fasting that I'm going to get healed from this pain. Okay, well, you go on a fast. What did the Lord tell you to fast? Well, he told me to fast for a couple days. Is it completely not eating or is it a meal? See, that's between you and God, amen? But hear my heart. When you start the fast and you're not eating, but yet every time you get up, oh, my gosh, what am I going to do with this bum hip? Oh, I need some more medication. I I just can't do this. This is just, you failed. You know why? You did not fast your lips. Are you following me, church? Father God is saying, will you fast that garbage? Will you cut it out? And I promise you in Jesus' name, test God, not me. Tell God, Father, I hear you loud and clear. I have the assignment and you told me to fast. Father, start with me. Tell me when you want me to fast. And when I fast, Father, change, change the produce of my lips. Change the fruit of my mouth. That what I speak, that I know that I eat, I want to eat your goodness. I want to eat your blessings. Amen. I want to eat your healing. Hallelujah. I want to eat you. Hallelujah. Only you, Father. Your fruit. I don't want to eat junk. Well, how sad is it that when we fast, some of us could fast for weeks. How sad would it be, though, that in the fast, all you do is, oh, man, I'm just so hungry right now. Can I ask you, is God in that anymore? Many people ask me, how do you know when the fast is over? There you go. You're no longer praying. You're no longer thanking the Lord. All you're doing is thinking about food. It's over. But if you could adjust your thoughts. And say, Father, I'm going to fast because you said so. And in this prayer, Father God, I'm going to show you that not only through my sacrifice and fasting, but I will not speak death over myself. I will speak life and life in abundance. Can I get an amen? Let's give God praise. If God moves on your heart, hallelujah. We got one song, praise God. God moves on your heart to come to this altar. Please come. But I pray in Jesus' name. That Holy Spirit will bless us all with a fresh anointing in how to carry out fasting, not only just with food, but the fruits of our lips. Amen.